How do I grow my glutes? Why are my glutes not growing? These are probably the most common questions that I get as an online fitness coach. And while we are going to answer those questions today, I want you guys to know that everything that I'm about to discuss applies to all muscle groups. So regardless, if you are frustrated with the lack of progress in your glutes or your calves or your biceps, the concepts that we are about to discuss apply to all. And the simple answer to your perceived lack of progress often has to do with our hyperfixation on exercise selection. Not that specific exercises aren't important. There are some exercises that are going to be more optimal in comparison to others. I think that we are getting too hyper fixated on which exercises we are doing and we aren't paying attention to our level of intensity when performing said exercise. For example, I am sure you have seen many fitness influencers telling you the four secret exercises to grow your glutes. One of them being a hip thrust. Another common one is going to be a Romanian deadlift. I'm sure a lot of you have seen the step up. And another example is gonna be the cable glute kickback. I don't have my ankle straps right now, but I'm sure most of you know what this exercise is. And this is not to say that these aren't optimal exercises. Every single one of them are great movement patterns that we should be prioritizing if the goal is to grow your glutes. But what often happens is, if somebody gets a program with these four exercises and say it says in the program for you to do three sets of 10, the individual will go and do three sets of 10 for every single exercise, thinking that their job is done. They've done the optimal exercises that are going to facilitate the muscle growth that they are looking for, and there's nothing else that they need to worry about. There's a missing component here if this is your thought process. And that's your level of intensity. So say you are to do single-legged dumbbell hip thrusts, okay? And the uh, program calls for three sets of 10. You do this week after week after week, you grab your dumbbell. You know the drill here, right, you guys? Where we're doing a single leg dumbbell hip thrusts. We do three sets of 10. Then we move on to the other side, three sets of 10, just pretend I'm doing 10 here. And then you finish off and you think, okay, we're good to go. On to the next exercise. The issue with that is there's no level of intensity that we are considering. So what do I mean by that? In order for us to facilitate muscle growth, we need a close proximity of failure in your given sets. So that means that your last rep shouldn't look like your first rep. We have to take that into consideration if we actually want to truly facilitate the growth that we are looking for. So yes, ladies, this means you have to lift heavy. If you're doing three sets of 10 with this 20 pound dumbbell, and this is how your first rep looks. And by the time you get to your 10th rep, if it looks like this, the exact same as that first rep, you are not achieving that close proximity to failure that is needed for you to actually see the progress that you are so desperately hoping for. Instead, we want that last rep to look a lot slower unintentionally in comparison to that first rep. That's how you know you are achieving that muscular fatigue that is needed and that you're actually firing off the muscle fibers that are needed for the growth to occur. So for an example of how it might look, you know, your first rep, like we'll actually do a full one to 10 here. So the tempo should go down, right? So we're doing our first couple of reps. It feels pretty good. Okay, maybe by my fifth rep, I'm starting to feel fatigue. And then unintentionally, I'm slowing down. It's harder and harder for me to extend my hips and it feels like I can't keep going. You wanna push past that and keep going until you feel like you can't. If you have like maybe one or two reps left in the tank and I'm shaking and it's hard for me to get a full extension and that last rep looks kind of a bit messy, 
in comparison to that first rep, obviously you don't want your form to break down because we want to reduce any risk of injury, but we want that last rep to be so challenging to the point where it feels like you can maybe only do one more rep by the time you get to the end of your prescribed rep count. That is often the missing component that a lot of people aren't prioritizing and then they're wondering time after time, session after session, year after year, why am I not seeing the growth that I am looking for? Intensity with your lifts matter more than your exercise selection. So that leads into another common question that I get, and that is, well, what rep count should I do? Should I do high reps? Should I do low reps? What rep range is gonna be best to optimize muscle growth? And the answer to this is it actually doesn't really matter. I would let your preferences guide you when it comes to your rep range. Me personally, I like the lower end of the rep range where I'm doing around six to 10 reps. The research does show that you are more able to objectively ensure that you're getting to failure with your actual set when you're doing lower reps. Whereas if you're doing higher reps, 10 plus, I wouldn't really do more than 20 reps. It is very difficult to actually ensure that you are achieving that close proximity to failure. And that's just because we tend to get bored. You don't have to lift as heavy and it can be very difficult to differentiate muscular fatigue with actual failure. Cause you know, you start to feel that burning sensation and it's a little bit uncomfortable when you are at a higher rep range, making it a little bit more difficult to objectively ensure that you're achieving close proximity to failure. Some people though, they thrive on higher reps. And I actually do like higher reps on certain exercises like dumbbell, lateral raises, for example. I don't wanna do six to 10 reps for that. I find that I enjoy higher reps and I can still ensure that I'm achieving failure when I'm doing higher reps. Whereas when I'm doing hip thrusts, I don't wanna do more than eight to 10 reps. I would rather kind of get it over with, lift a little bit heavier. Yes, it's a little bit more taxing, but I find that I'm able to still get to failure a lot easier in comparison to doing higher reps. So for me personally, like certain exercises that I don't overly enjoy, like hip thrusts, for example, I don't wanna be sitting there for two plus minutes doing 15 plus reps. I'd rather get the set done in 30 seconds by doing six, maybe eight reps. And when it comes to muscle growth, it doesn't matter which rep range you choose. So let your preferences guide you. Your body and the muscle that you are training, it doesn't recognize the amount of reps that you are doing. It doesn't even know how much load you are lifting. It recognizes sensation. So when you get to that close proximity to failure with six reps, or if you get to that close proximity to failure with 15 reps, that sensation is the same. And that is what's going to promote muscle growth. So instead of getting so caught up in exercise selection, make sure that your intensity of a given exercise is on point. It really doesn't matter which exercises you do. And that's where preferences definitely come into play. If you don't like hip thrusts and you would rather do some back squats, both exercises are gonna facilitate muscle growth, especially if you are able to progress and achieve that close proximity to failure of a given exercise. If you'd rather do RDLs, if you'd rather do step ups, you know, don't get so caught up in what's kind of being posted on social media constantly. These four exercises, these secret exercises to better abs, these secret exercises to bigger glutes, it's not specifically about the exercise itself, it's about actually achieving that close proximity to failure that is needed to facilitate the muscle growth that you're looking for.